Yeah, Monday. What's up, everybody? Monday morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. I hope everybody had a great weekend, was able to get out, enjoy the weather. Spring has sprung. I hope it sprung where you live as well, and you're able to get out, enjoy the, enjoy the weather, have a good day, have a good weekend. But we're going to do what we do each and every day, starting with our major markets and taking a look at some potential turning points. Uh, we do see that the NASDAQ and the S&P are both down a bit this morning, although the NASDAQ showing a little bit of relative strength to the S&P, which is a, a, a refreshing bit of fresh air after Friday's big rally higher. We're also going to talk about some stocks that took some crashes on Friday. And what does that mean as far as how you manage those positions? So stay tuned. Watch to the end of the video. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor. Click the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Make sure that you push the thumbs up icon down below. That really means a lot. Uh, and also, if there's a stock you want me to talk about, please put it in the comments and I'll see if I can take a look at that stock in our next session. But until then, let's go ahead and start with the big picture. So looking first at our big picture, we're going to start with the S&P, as that's our normal market to start with. And starting here with the S&P, we can see that on Friday, we had that huge run up, big run up on Friday. Now, last night in our live trade room, we took a look at a 15-minute area of demand where we thought we might get a decent little turn. And we came really, really close to the line that we identified. Uh, and when I say really, really close, I mean within a tick. And so you may or may not have had that trade set up. I will tell you, it didn't get there until after midnight U.S. time. Uh, so you may not have been awake to take that trade, although it did give you a pretty a pretty decent entry. And off of that move, we've rallied up about 25 points. So I'm going to remove that level at this point. And we do have a little supply level here up above us. Now, last night when I had identified this supply level, what we were looking at was the fact that there's a little bit of sideways price action. Now, remember, in that area of sideways price action, we know that there was a fairly equal amount of buyers and sellers before price moved away, leaving behind some probable sell orders saying that when price returns to there, we may get filled. Well, when I drew that level, the market was still here. All right? Uh, I'm sorry, right here. The market was right there when we drew that level, right about 7 p.m. Central. And so it, the market it didn't really come back into there. Matter of fact, we stayed below there the rest of the evening, and now we're basing in front of the level. So those of you that are familiar with the phrase KOD knows that that's considered the kiss of death. I don't like trades that are basing in front of the level. I will say that we may get a little opportunity at this area right here um, if we get a bit of a pullback. So keep an eye on that one for today for a small entry. Uh, could be good for a two to one, even a three to one, but allow your profits to run if it does start going your way. Now, the S&P is down about 12 points. The NASDAQ is only down about six, which, which means that there's a little bit of relative strength in the NASDAQ to the S&P today. Um, which we haven't seen in quite a while. Now, we didn't have any major levels identified on the NASDAQ because, frankly, we are in a downtrend. But our downtrend was starting to give us a little bit of, of weakness here. Our four-hour trend, I have lower swing lows and lower swing highs. But I felt like there's a chance we were putting in a bit of a base. And so I was really hesitant to take some of these other areas of supply for potential shorts. Uh, technically, we could still look at this area right here as a supply zone, uh, an area where supply has exceeded demand in the past, as well as a, uh, you know, kind of a fair price value area. So you could look into here, obviously stop above the pivot, but that to me would be about the best one. If you go to a smaller time period, say the 15 minute chart, I actually have uh, the same level that we identified in the S&P is available in the NASDAQ. Um, for a smaller time frame potential long entry. So that's 12904 by 12890. Um, next, crude oil. So looking at crude oil, we are sitting at a couple of areas in crude oil that we need to pay attention to. And I will say, uh, excuse me, that's not, that's not crude oil, that's the Russell, um, which we're looking for a potential breakout here above the Russell. But let me slide over to crude oil. There we go. Um, now, crude oil, we're looking for a potential breakout above this blue line. However, in order to get that breakout, I'm going to need basing inside of this gray box area. I need narrow range candles to give me a reason to get into the position. I cannot just, uh, I cannot just get long on the breakout because that's where you oftentimes will get price popping just above and then coming right back down, 
stopping you out, and then going the way you thought it was going to go anyway. Um, and that's what people call a false breakout. We don't call that false breakouts. We call that not a breakout because it didn't base in front of the level, allowing me to have a quality entry. If I look at the 15-minute chart and say, where's my best entry to get back in and to re-engage this uptrend, here's my problem with all these levels. This one here has already been retested. We see this big wick up right there, and then price came back down and retested this level. Uh, so that, to me, is no, no, no bueno. Um, this level here has already been retested. Price moved up, retested, boom, moved away. And so, you know, you, you come to this wick over wick way down here is probably your best one. That's all the way down there at 60. So we'll see if we retest that for an opportunity. Now, you certainly still can have the breakout trade, provided that we get some basing in here. And then you've got a target. Uh, I'd say your first target is probably up around 63.45, which is this prior area of support. Um, and then your second target would be this wick over wick supply area up in here. Now, we are forming on the bigger picture, a bit of a base here with a, uh, a bit of a double bottom here, winner, winner, chicken dinner, um, that we could see price continue to rally from this level. Uh, next, gold. So looking at gold, last night we, uh, we determined that there was really no directional trades to be had in gold. Nothing was exciting for me in gold, and I'm going to stay that way. Um, however, we did talk about a potential for an iron condor in between these two regions. So for those of you that trade options, take a look at a potential iron condor in between those two regions. Um, I one, one that I will point out uh, is taking a look at the dollar. Oops. Uh, taking a look at our dollar, which I don't normally do uh, in the mornings, but I want to talk about it. We are a bit more bullish in the dollar, sitting in an area where we could get a nice dollar breakout. Now, what does that mean for me? Well, that means for me that when I look at currencies, like the Euro US dollar, we could have a potential for a breakdown. And so a potential for a breakdown very much exists in our Euro USD below this area here, provided that we get the right basing. Well, we are getting some pretty decent basing. Um, we had looked at it last night in the currency futures market during our live trade room, and we identified a little supply area up here for a potential reversal. And price did come in, give us a nice little move away. The second time in, uh, if you tried it a second time, probably for a little stop out, the first time was not enough to, to get you out. But the breakout trade is still the better trade. Um, the, the more aggressive entry uh, was up there, but the breakout trade is still up in this level. So those are our major markets for today. It looks like we've got a little bit of a bullish sentiment um, heading into the day in the NASDAQ, although uh, certainly we've got to see how that plays out in a couple of decent areas. Uh, but let's talk about our stocks that are in the news, because there's a couple of them that are in the news. Stocks of the news coming at you. So my stocks in the news today are not about identifying really good opportunities. We've got lots of trades that we've talked about throughout the last couple of days uh, and the last few weeks in the DMC. But what we're going to talk about today is a cautionary tale. Right? We're going to talk about two companies that sold off for absolutely no reason that, that a traditional investor is going to look at, and they just sold off essentially like that. And so we're talking Discovery Communications and Viacom, CBS. So looking at Discovery Communications, here's the chart of Discovery. We can see that we have sold off from 78 all the way down. We got as low as 34. So think about that. The stock was, over, was cut by 60%. In one, two, three, four, five days. So what can I do about that, right? How do I protect myself against that? Well, in all reality, you have to have a stop loss in place, and you've got to listen to your stop loss and trust your stop. I'm positive that there are traders out there that had a stop loss below here. And the day that the market gapped down below that stop loss, they said, eh, I don't want to execute that, or I'm going to stay in because I think it's a good buy, or even worse, I'm going to buy more, right? There are other traders that didn't have a stop loss in at all. I'm positive of that, and they've ridden it down. Now, might it come back? Absolutely, it might. And if you were on uh, trading on the longer term and more of an investing on the longer term time scale, and you're willing to, to take a 60% pullback in the value of your, of your portfolio uh, for, of this position, then great. I am not. Um, the other thing that I don't want to be doing is I don't want to be trying to time 
the bottom in these periods of, of extreme volatility. I mean, when you look at candlesticks of this size, where's a quality demand area to buy? Now, I will, I've, I've got one highlighted as a potential area that there is a quality area of demand with a nice little move away. But here's the, I'll call it the argument that I have for a lot of people, is that was this a quality area of demand? Sure, it was a, it was a nice little drop base, pretty strong rally, fresh area, never been touched before. Um, and the market cut right through it like a knife through butter. Um, was this a quality area and an opportunity to buy? Absolutely it was. We had a drop, a base, and a very strong rally, which included a gap. And the market cut through it like a knife through butter. And how about this one? Was this one? Yeah, this was actually pretty clean as well. Not a bad little area, knife through butter. Um, you guys see what see my point? You see where I'm getting at here? Another area, knife through butter. So what's going to make this one any different? Let me give you a hint. There's nothing any different about it. What's different about it is how do you, how do you engage the market in that position? What, what's the best way to do it? I believe that the best way to handle that when you see those kind of an areas that could be good areas of demand, but you don't want to jump in front of that moving train, is to take a confirmation entry and to wait for price to come into this area with some sort of a candlestick reversal pattern. Things like hammers, things like bullish engulfing. Um, you know, that I think is really, now I get long on the next candlestick that goes a bit higher. But you say, well, Chuck, what if I miss it? Then you miss it. But I'd, I'd rather aim small, miss small. Aim small, miss small. And I wanna take those small misses whenever they come. You know, if, if I go back and look at the SPX uh, and I look at, the daily chart of the SPX, and we go back a um, couple of years, we're going to look back to the beginning of when COVID happened, right? So we were seeing this same thing happen when COVID happened right through here. But notice what we started to get down here towards the bottom. We got a reversal candle. We got another candle that was okay, but it didn't come above the reversal candle. And then we got another fairly strong reversal candle closing on the high. Now, we still not an entry to get in. Matter of fact, we got a reversal candle right here too. Nice long tail closing on the high, but we never got above that candle's high. If you notice, once we got down here, this bullish engulfing candlestick pattern that we set up right here, bullish engulfing candlestick pattern, we got higher than the prior candle's high. There's your entry, right? Now, that also coincided with, and if you guys want to go back, I'll put a link to it in the, in the comment section down below. You can go back and watch our daily market commentary from around that time where we talked about that we could see a bounce off of this level and there's an opportunity to buy based on the area of demand. But it doesn't mean that we get in until I get some sort of a confirmation. So the same thing happens with individual stocks like Discovery Communications or Viacom CBS is that, yes, we have an area of demand that could be a decent buy area, but I'm not willing to take that trade until I get some sort of a, of a candlestick pattern that gets, me a, uh, that gets me an entry, some sort of a candlestick pattern that gets me some sort of an entry and a confirmation on there. So hopefully that'll help you in your trading. If you guys have any questions, as always, send me an email, support at tradersarmy.com. Hope you guys have a phenomenal day. I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Hey, thanks for joining us. If you like what we do, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's the only way the computers know that you're actually alive and really care. And go to tradersarmy.com today to learn a bit more. And if you want to see some of our other videos, click here in the box.